Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about the universal properties of languages. As you know, that we have so many languages around the world. Even they are different, but they share the same features anyway. Let's see. Before I explain in details, I would like to give you two words here. The first one, the word consonant. The word consonant is like m, p, t. There are sounds that can be used like at the beginning of the word or probably at the end of the word, like the word map, the word pot, or the word trying. And for the vowel, just like a, e, i, o, u in English. Okay, right now, think about the number of consonant sounds and vowel sounds in English. As you know, that we have 26 English alphabets, and five of them are vowel sounds, like a, e, i, o, u. So it means that we have more consonant sounds than vowel sounds in English for sure. So what about tie? Do we have more consonants than vowel sounds? Yes or no? All right. So right now, think about other languages. Does your language have more consonant sounds than vowel sounds? I think the answer must be yes. And this is only the example of the universal properties of languages. There are five universal properties of languages, namely creativity, arbitrariness, discreteness, mutability, and inaccessibility. Let's start with creativity. Language allows novelty and innovation in response to new thoughts, experiences, and situations. It means that we always create new words in order to serve the new innovation. Think about the word computer. If we go back to like 800 years ago, that we didn't have this kind of innovation. So there is no need for the word computer. But these days, if we don't have the word computer, that will be pretty difficult for us to address something that is used for a new technology. It's not only at the word level. Creativity can be used at the sentence level as well. For example, you can add more and more vocabularies in one sentence. There is no limitations. Like we can start from Mike decided to buy an apartment, and then you can give more one just one more word like Mike decided to buy a big apartment, and then you just go to another information that is Mike decided to buy a big fully furnished apartment, and it's also possible to give more information about the place. So you can say Mike decided to buy a big fully furnished apartment in London. So, give me one word to extend this sentence. Then you can see that we can make use of creativity in our daily lives, and this happens to all of the languages around the world. Even we can make use of creativity, but there are some limitations anyway. I have some examples for you here. Let's see. Set number one: A. Kate summered in Italy. B. Mike vacationed in Hawaii, and C. Greg wintered in Spain. Set number two: A. Sam midnighted in the club. B. Andrew nooned at the canteen on campus. Actually, the word summered, vacationed, wintered, midnighted, and nooned—they are all now. But here we are using them as the verbs, as a result of creativity. But I have to tell you that only set one are acceptable. Can you guess why? For the first three words, summer, vacation, winters, there are a long period of time, like two weeks or three months. But what about midnighted and noon? They are a short period, so it's not common to use them as verbs. Okay, I have another example for you. I have two sets of words. Right now, try to pronounce these words. I have to say that all of them there don't appear in the dictionary. Okay, so how do you feel? Which one, which side is easier to pronounce? 
If you feel that on the left hand side is easier to pronounce, can you tell me the reason why? Think about the cluster on the left hand side. P R F L S T R and F T. Can you give me some word starting with P R? Well, I have the word prime and press. For F L, I have the word flow and fly. For S T R, I have the word strong, stream. And for F T, I have the word left and cough. This is the reason why you feel that on the left hand side is easier because they all appear in English language system, while PS, BF, FD, and KL are rarely found in English language system. So we can say that even we can make use of the creativity, but there are still some limitations. The second property is arbitrariness. A word in a language is a connection between form and meaning, image and understanding. We see or hear the form of the word and we understand the meaning of the word. The connection between form and meaning is arbitrary. This means there is no natural connection between the form of a word and its meaning, or we can say that they are randomly selected. This is the example to show that there is no connection between the form of a word and its meaning. You can see that we have the form P E N, and we have two meanings. The first one is an instrument for writing, or one of the stationery. Another one is an enclosure where we can keep animals. So you can see that they share exactly the same form, but they are totally different in terms of meaning. So it means that there are con no connections between the form and its meaning. Moreover, one meaning can be represented by many forms, like the word go in English, the word by in Thai, and we can use the green traffic light as a signal. For a domestic animal, we can say cat in English, and we can say male in Thai. You can see that they all have the different form, but the same meaning. On the other hand, we have the form GIFT, which means the present in English, but means poison in German. This is to ensure that there is no connection between form and meaning. So what would happen if there is a real connection between the form and the meaning? I can say that there would be only one universal language, and we all would speak the same language. Have you heard these sounds before? Yes, they are sounds from bicycle bell, dog, rooster, and clock. They are called onomatopoeic words or words that imitate natural sounds, and they are the exceptional case for arbitrariness because the relationship between form and meaning seems to be very, very close. However, we have to say that onomatopoeic words. Or in different forms in different languages, it means that there is no natural connection between form and meanings. All right, let's hear the sound of rooster from different countries around the world. That in China, the rooster says woo woo woo. Well, in America, we say cock a doodle doo. Those are completely different. I gotta get to the bottom of this. Oh, what is the sound the rooster makes? In French, le coq says "cocorico." All right, thanks. Nanuka, what is the sound the rooster makes? In Georgia, Mama Lee says i k o l i k o Thank you. Andre, listen, Ma, what sound does the rooster make? In Peru, el gallo says k i k i r i k i Okay, thanks. Ugh. Nithya, 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 Nithya. What's the sound the rooster makes? In India, the murga says k u k u r u k u Okay. And that is the world today. I'm Asiye Namdar. What is the sound the rooster makes? 
In Iran, Kuru says, Kukuli Kuru. So, how does the rooster make the sound in your country? Another exception for arbitrariness is sound symbolism, which is a word whose pronunciation suggests a particular meaning. It means that one sound can represent one meaning. For example, we have the sound e means something that is tiny. So we can have the word like tiny, pretty, little. What about the word small? There is no e vowel in this word, right? And we have another one, another sound that is fl. Fl seems to be something that is flexible, so we can have the word flow, flood, and fly. So what about the floor? Is that flexible? So we can say that onomatopoeic words in sound symbolism are not a good exception for arbitrariness. So we can say that there is no natural connection between form and meaning anyway. The third property is discreteness. Language is composed of separate sounds and words that can be identified, combined, or recombined differently in each language. This is the reason why we understand the language we know because we know how we separate the word. For example, we have the word cat. You know it's from C A T cat. Another example is what's your name. You know that the word what is the question word. Is is the verb. While the word your name is a subject complement, so you understand this. But once that you don't understand Chinese, you don't know Korean, it's pretty hard for us to separate them in smaller units and also to understand them. The fourth property is mutability. All languages are constantly changing over time. The first type of chain is called major change. And this takes so long time in order to be changed, and it happens with structure, words, and at actually it's all level of the language. Here is an example of major change in both structure level and word level. You can see that the word say and the word word is different from what we are using these days, and we are not going to say I n e y say not like that anymore. Next is minor change that happens pretty quickly, probably in two or three years, and they occur in the word level mostly, particularly slang. For example, the word salty. The ordinary meaning is tasting of salt. If it's slang, this means angry or aggressive. And this happened to all of the languages around the world because languages are subject to change. The last property is inaccessibility. That is, the knowledge of language is different from other knowledge. If you want to know how to calculate, or if you want to understand about the traffic rules, you'd better go to school. But you acquire the knowledge of language since you were young. I'm talking about your first language. You just imitate what your parents speak, and later you are able to communicate with others. So, linguistics knowledge is subconscious. Sometimes, as a native speaker, we are not sure whether what we are speaking is right or wrong. So, what do you think about these two sentences? I go to school and I go to movie. Which one is right and which one is wrong? Well, I think all of you know that the second sentence is wrong. But can you tell me the reason why? That's because in the first sentence we have the word school, and the word school is a place. So we can say I go to school. While in another sentence we have the word movie, and the word movie is not a place. So how can we fix the second sentence? Can you tell me? This is the end of this video. I think now you understand more about the universal properties of the language. Thank you for your attention. Now let's do the assignment. See you in next video.